All right, geeks. When you reach a certain age, your attitude towards time and speed changes. There's nothing left to learn the hard way. Things you buy today don't have enough time to wear out. And you can always join any street gang as long as you're home by nine. But all my wisdom about the absurdity of time and existence doesn't help me deal with one of the horrors of modern living, slow internet. I just can't handle it. When my internet is slower than my third husband on tranquilizers, but my computer keeps saying connected, I yell, then act like it. And I grant myself the first drink of the day. But maybe Sean, my co-host, has some tips for you, even though he's not so fast himself. Right, Sean? No. The complaint that manifests itself as the internet is slow sounds to a sysadmin something like fingernails down a chalkboard. This is because, as obvious as the symptoms might be, the actual problem could lie literally anywhere. Bad bandwidth, problems with the service provider, problems with the target host, literally anywhere. About 10 years ago, this wasn't much of a problem because employees weren't supposed to be using the internet. But nowadays, many crucial services are internet-based, such as Office 365, cloud-based services, and so on. That means slow internet, slow crucial services. Start with the speed test. The first step is to find out, is the connection actually slow? And if you're going to do some fixing later, you need to know what the initial values are. So, speed test. If you're a system administrator, educate your users to do this before they come to you. Tell them to contact you with the values of a speed test when they have a problem and educate them how to do that. And when they do contact you, your first words should be, did you do a speed test? And if they say, yep, and the internet is slow, then you say, did you try turning it off and on again? Pro tips for admins right here all day, folks. But seriously, an internet speed test is good. You'll probably use speedtest.net for this, but there are other reliable ones as well, like dslreports.com. If there is a slow connection, it's time to investigate further. Here are a few things you can try. Check your local bandwidth. The problem with an internet-based speed check is that it involves your local connection in the test, and your local environment could well be the problem. For this reason, it is useful to know about the bandwidth of your local network, and this requires a locally installed bandwidth tool or monitoring software. You have that, right? Because if you don't, you go and speak to your manager right now and tell them Sean sent you. Go on, this is important. Check out PRTG. Because a bandwidth monitoring tool can give you a lot of information about what's happening on your network. You can watch for bandwidth spikes, look for patterns, and generally get an overall feel for the health and efficiency of your network. It can also directly point to things that are causing your internet speed woes, like hardware issues, network optimization problems, and so on. Sometimes a bandwidth check will lead you to a specific part of your infrastructure that's problematic, but even if it doesn't, you should check your infrastructure anyway. So many times, a slow network makes the internet seem slow, and it's easy for us to blame the Office 365 servers or our ISP. But outdated hardware and wiring can cause a slow local network. Check regularly on your network devices, like switches, routers, firewalls, and so on. Keep them updated to the latest firmware and get rid of them when they're out of date. And don't forget the cables. Content filtering. Create and communicate an internet usage policy. Clearly define what your users should and shouldn't access on the internet and communicate it well. The blacklisted sites shouldn't only be security risks, but also sites that you know are bandwidth intensive and not necessary for their everyday work routine. Generally, you don't want to be the evil firewall admin and restrict sites because we're all adults, we believe in the good of all people, and users will not access the blacklisted sites. Sarcasm? If users ignore your policy and you continue to have slow internet issues, it's time to filter content. Many routers and devices have mechanisms to do this, and there are other ways to do it. Make use of it. Reconsider your wireless access philosophy. Do you have a BYOD approach for users accessing your wireless network? And do guests have unlimited access to your wireless network? And do you also have slow internet speeds? Uh, problem solved, close the ticket, we're out of here. Because that is probably exactly where your problem lies. 
Imagine a few dozen Facebook apps constantly communicating advertising data, or your users streaming YouTube, Spotify, Netflix, all on your wireless network, or automatic updates the moment the users connect their devices to your network. That's a lot of network traffic right there. If you are having problems, and you have an open wireless network policy, it might be time to consider a change. Talk to your ISP. It's only after you've exhausted all these other options, or you've definitely been able to ascertain that the problem lies with your internet provider that you need to get your ISP on the line. Provide them with the metrics and information about what you've done so far, and they'll already have a good starting point from which they can help. Or they'll just ask you to turn your router off and on again and tell you to run a trace route. Wow, this internet surprises me over and over again. Sure, it's not the solution to all of my problems. I mean, I won't gain more years to live through fast-loading websites. I would do that by not dying. However, fast internet is a good compromise. You know what else you can do to guarantee yourself fast internet? Subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Come on, click, click.